Hi right, everyone, um, welcome to another coverage, monitoring, whatever you want to call it, of the ECB's... Uh... So anyway guys, um, where were we? We're talking about... Um, uh, I was just saying uh, welcome to this uh, webinar. So we're supposed to cover the ECB um, decision. Um, unfortunately, I really tend to think that this is going to be another dud. Why do I say this? Because it's unlikely that um, the ECB will uh, cut rates some more. It's unlikely that the ECB will introduce um, more um, unconventional policy tools to provide liquidity. In fact, if you look at the news that we have had over the past month. What are we hearing? We heard that the banks are uh, starting to pay their LTRO from last year. Those uh, LTROs were supposed to last for three years, and yet the banks are paying them now. So what does that tell you? It tells you that they're no longer con concerned that uh, they are undercapitalized, that they don't have any money. Um, they've got the money. What else? If you look at um, forward-looking indicators out of uh, the Eurozone, um, I'm not saying that uh, they are surprising us um, on the upside, but they have not been bad. Okay? Um, sure, real-world economic data continue to be disappointing, continue to be of concern. Um, Spanish unemployment is still rising. Uh, the French economy is uh, see, showing signs of weakness. But um, overall, the idea that somehow someone's going to leave the Eurozone, the idea that um, there will be a dissolution of the Eurozone, that's been thrown out of the window already. So because of this, we don't think that the ECB is going to introduce anything. They're not going to cut rates any further. Um, they're not likely to talk about new policy tools. To they're not likely to talk about new policy tools to provide liquidity or to help certain sectors of uh, the economy. So what does that tell us? Well, I think the key, okay, let me just uh, fix this issue. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So again, um, if we're not expecting any of this, and in fact, we're now saying that um, we're actually likely to see some changes for um, the upside in uh, the policy bias of the Eurozone, um, we might actually get uh, the, e or, or it's possible that uh, the ECB will be hinting, will be adopting the idea that uh, we're no longer, that they're no longer um, going to cut rates even going forward. So folks, what am I trying to say? What I'm trying to say is this, um, the idea of more QE action, the idea of uh, pay cuts in the, in the Eurozone, that's no longer um, in the picture, that's no longer in the game. Going forward, if anything, we should now be more concerned about the ECB saying, that's it, we're not going to cut rates anymore, the economy... Um, is uh, on a recovery track already, although we're not saying that they're going to raise interest rates anytime soon, but I think a commitment by the ECB of not um, cutting interest rates any further would have an impact for us, would be a good excuse to think in terms of can we get our euro to strengthen. Of course, they're not going to say that in the rate announcement, okay? 
they're not going to say uh, during the interstate announcement, oh, by the way, um, yes, we have said that uh, there will be no rate cuts today, and um, but, oh, by the way, we're not going to do any more rate cuts going uh, forward in the future. All right, Ahmad. Um, let's restart what we're, what I've been saying. Um, I'm saying what I'm saying is this: as far as this interest rate announcement by the ECB is concerned, it's not going to be exciting. We're not going to get a rate cut. We are not going to hear any announcement by the ECB that uh, they have this new tool that they have uh, that, that they're going to buy um, these uh, government bonds. We're not going to get any of this. Um, I'm talking about the ECB, the European Central Bank. Okay, so um, yeah. So again, we don't expect them to do anything in uh, their policy statement. No rate cuts, no new tools. Which means that if you're someone who's been hoping that the euro is uh, going to sell off because of the ECB announcement, forget it. That's not likely to happen. Now, okay, so if the ECB is not likely to say anything, uh, not likely to do anything, what are we supposed to expect? Well, as usual for the ECB announcements, 45 minutes after the ECB announcement, which will be um, at 12.45 GMT, we are going to see a press conference. Now that to me, as usual, is the more important event. So what are we supposed to look for in this um, press conference by the ECB? For one, we would like to, well, here's what I'm hoping for. I'm hoping that during the press conference, you're going to have some journalists out there come out and ask um, Mario Draghi plainly. So, have we seen an end to the rate cuts by the ECB? Now, of course, um, I don't expect Mario Draghi to say, yes, we're not going to cut rates anymore. But if someone asks that question during the press conference, listen to his reply. Because... From the indications that we now have in data from uh, the Eurozone, from uh, recent statements, we have the possibility of the ECB communicating that, yes, that's likely to happen, that uh, we're not going to have any further uh, rate cuts going forward. We are confident enough of the recovery in the Eurozone economy. There could be some sectors of weakness, but that's something that, um, that that's not a panic level uh, concern. So if we hear this, that becomes argument, that becomes fuel for us to look at a further rally in our Euro. Um, Ahmad, okay, let's take EURUSD, uh, let's look at the EURUSD chart. We have an uptrend, right? A rate cut, which I think is impossible right now. A rate cut would mean that the currency for the country that cut its rates should weaken. Um, let's put it from this perspective. You have two banks. Bank uh, A and Bank B. And uh, Bank A will give you 1% interest if you uh, put your money in them. And Bank B will give you 2% interest if you put your money in them. Now, if you have a million dollars, where will you put it? 
Will you put it in bank A or will you put it in bank B where you have a higher interest? I'm sure you're, an, well, I'm pretty confident that you'll probably tell me, well, if bank B is going to give me 2% interest rates, then I'm going to put my money there. So the same applies for the currency markets. Um, exactly. So the same applies for the currencies. If a bank, in this case the ECB, decides to cut interest rates, it makes the currency less attractive. Why would I put my money in Europe if uh, the interest rates are going lower? I'd rather put it somewhere else. The ECB is the European Central Bank. Um, they're the equivalent of the Fed in uh, Europe. They're responsible for printing the money in the Eurozone. Oh, uh, Jen, you know what? That's a very interesting question. Um, although I'm, let's look at it as Euro Pound because I don't have a GBP EUR chart. Let's look at it from an EUR GBP perspective. So let me just finish with the mod. So again, Ahmad, ECB is the European Central Bank. They are the equivalent of the Fed. They are the equivalent of the Bank of England in the Eurozone. They are responsible for printing money there. All right, let's go to uh, Gem uh, Trader's question. That's an interesting question because earlier we heard from who? We heard from Mark Carney. Who's Mark Carney? Mark Carney is the incoming governor of the uh, Bank of England. Okay? He will be replacing uh, Mervyn King. Now, if you look at your chart for Europound, earlier we saw some very uh, nice, very, um, <clears throat> I would say very crazy movement. We saw your euro pound suddenly sell off and then um, went back up. What happened there? Well, Mark Carney spoke. Um, Mark Carney was thought of as ultra dovish. Um, back in December, in an interview with Financial Times, he said that um, he thinks that the BOE should just drop the inflation target idea, which is how central banks um, view their job, inflation targeting. He said last December, let's drop inflation targeting and um, <coughs> let's uh, adopt a new target. He wants to target nominal GDP, meaning he wants to focus on trying to grow the economy. So before that interview, that testimony, that question and answer that Mark Carney had with the House of Commons Treasury Committee earlier, people thought that um, people thought that uh, he is going to say that um, I will focus on uh, growing the UK economy. When you say that you will focus, if you're a central bank governor, and you say that you will focus on growing the economy, then the response would be, or the only way for you to do that would be to print money to lower interest rates. So everyone was expecting Mark Carney will be bad news for cable. And yet in the interview, his first statement was, um, the UK, the BOE, should drop its... Um, I forgot the exact terms, but should drop its uh, unorthodox policy, its um, radical policies. Okay, and uh, the implication was this guy is talking about maybe uh, raising interest rates soon. This guy is talking about maybe uh, putting an end to the asset purchase facility. So people were surprised with that, and they bought cable as a response. And then um, 20 minutes after. Here comes Mark Carney uh, still talking and he says, you know what, um, I really want to help revive the UK economy, which is again code word for a central banker saying, I'm going to print money. So we, end up, we ended up with a very confused um, market with regard to Carney's uh, appearance earlier. Now, how are we supposed to trade our Euro Pound 
um, given what we're expecting from the ECB. I'm hoping that all the confusion from Carney's statement is already over and done with, and we can just deal with the ECB question. If we're going to deal with the ECB question only, then uh, first thing that I would look at is this. Um, the ECB is sounding bullish about the economy. Um, if, as we said, some reporter asks uh, Draghi and uh, he, that reporter manages to get Draghi to say it's unlikely that more rate cuts will happen, then that will become a bullish uh, argument for your euro. To me, that becomes argument for us to continue this um, bullish trend that we've had in our euro. Okay, um, Ahmad, let me just finish um, discussing euro pound and then we'll look at it. Okay, so how do you draw trend lines? Guys, if you have any questions on anything, just feel free to, to raise it. How do you do trend lines? Ahmad, basic rule is you want to use or you just want to connect um, the outliers, the lows, if you're looking for a bullish market or if you have uh, a pr prices that are dropping, then um, you want to connect the outlier highs. That's the textbook way of uh, doing this. Some people, some traders, they do it differently. Instead of using the actual highs, some traders will use the closing prices and will run that uh, line across closing prices if possible. Me, I just go for the textbook. You just use the highs, connect them, or lows, uh, connect them, and there's your trend. Um, classically, you're supposed to connect three of those lows before you can say you have a good trend line. Um, gem, gem, oh sorry, gem trader. Uh, I'm actually very bearish as far as cable is concerned. I think that um, Carney's statements earlier about uh, the unconventional policy of the UK is basically to satisfy the criticism that uh, the chief economist of the BOE, who was also a candidate for becoming the governor, but uh, Carney edged him out, um, to satisfy his comments that if Carney becomes the governor, it will damage BOE credibility. Um, if I look at this, we have this double top in our weekly chart, and I think that we will just continue until we hit our target for that double top until we get to your um, 5320s, 5300A area. Remember that there is an element in the UK government right now which really wants a weaker cable. The way they look at it, everyone's uh, weakening their currencies except for the Europeans. Let's uh, try to get a weaker cable as well. Technically, the argument for weakness is there. Data-wise, the argument for weakness is there. Although you're still in a recession, uh, or rather, the, the economy in the Eurozone is still weak, um, at least they're not in a triple-dip recession the way uh, the UK has entered the triple-dip recession. So I would be bearish in your GU um, for a while, at least when, until we hit 5300. Um, to be honest, Ahmad, I don't use trend lines a lot. When I look at the chart and I ask the question, is market bullish or bearish? I ask the question of, do I have higher highs or do I have lower highs and lower lows? Okay. Um, I, okay, you see these lines? This uh, light blue, dark blue, and this yellow line? Those are... 21, 34, and uh, 55 day EMA lines. I tend to use them a lot. I like it if I have an EMA line and I have a hammer 
or a doji or a spinning top in my candlesticks hitting an EMA line. I normally look at those as uh, good entry points. So I tend to look at those EMA lines more than I would draw trend lines. Um, okay, basically you want to be in a situation where your uh, exponential moving averages are going in one direction. When uh, you've seen the lower time frame uh, exponential moving averages crossing the higher ones. If you have them all crossing each other and uh, going in one direction, then that's the trend of the market. Um, remember, they tell you the trend, but they're not actually good entry signals. The entry signal is generated by looking at uh, maybe at a stochastic. Um, for me, I always like using them as a support resistance level. Um, I use the EMA lines. I, I, I prefer using them. I haven't really used uh, simple moving averages in a long while, so I can't really compare it now. I use uh, 21, 34, and 55. All right, guys. Um, we're about seven minutes away from our decision. So let me just uh, review other Euro charts at this point. If you have any uh, question on anything else, um, you're always uh, welcome to raise them. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, let's move on. Let's take a look at something else. Um, what would be interesting? Wow. You have a sharp sell-off. Oh, let's take a look at uh, something, folks. Let's take a look at your Euro Swiss. Why do I like the Euro Swiss? Because um, it's a lazy trade. We've uh, sold off down to 61.8 fib retracement level. Uh, this is something that I'm willing to just uh, look for a buy and then maybe just hold on to it uh, in the long run. It depends on your broker, but uh, for some broker, you're going to have a positive swap. So this is a good carry trade for some broker. Um, the important thing here is this. As long as you don't have a negative swap for holding on to a buy, you can look at EuroSwiss and you can tell yourself, hey, guess what? EuroSwiss sold off by uh, quite a lot over the last uh, couple of years when there was fear that the Eurozone will collapse. It's bounced to 38.2 Fib level. There's a lot more room before your Euro Swiss gets back to what its uh, normal price before was. We also hear about rumors, or we also have rumors that the SNB will uh, move their floor from 1.2 to 1.25. Some are even suggesting 1.3. So there's a lot of argument that says in the long run, Eurospace uh, would be a good buy. It's a question of getting a nice dip. Euro NZD. That's an interesting chart. Here we go. Where are we in EUR NZD? You've uh, managed to push through your um, range play for the last uh, four or five months. If you look at this uh, on the daily picture, you're trying to resume the buy side. If I draw fibs on the latest up leg, we have a bounce from 61.8 fib. That's always a good idea. Now, um, let's talk about the fundies for Euro and um, New Zealand. As we said earlier, the Eurozone is recovering. Um, people are getting more confident. Business uh, confidence indicators are rising. 
uh, Mario Draghi doesn't sound like he's panicking anymore. He's not even uh, talking about future uh, rate cuts anymore. He is saying that uh, the economy is doing well. He's not concerned about what's happening in Germany. Contrast that to what we have in New Zealand. Um, your jobs data came out with a three consecutive uh, quarters of decline in the employment change number. It looks like the bad, the, the job situation in uh, New Zealand is getting so bad that people have stopped looking for work. That's why your latest uh, unemployment rate actually theoretically improved. It went down. So what am I saying? You have a classic situation where one currency is uh, starting to look strong and the other currency is just starting to look weak. Um, you know what? This is the kind of situation where you can really milk a currency pair. One currency is strong, the other currency is looked at as uh, starting to look weak, which means that um, we've got plenty of upside to look for in our EUR NZD, which means that uh, in the medium run, I would focus on just trying to uh, join the train. Now, let's talk specifics. Can we trade this still today? Average range is 157 pips. You've had 123 pips of price action. By the way, um, let me shut up for a while. We have, uh, we're only a couple of seconds away from the interest rate announcement. Now, we said that uh, we don't expect anything, but, you know, sometimes something crazy can happen. So let's just verify that uh, nothing's happening and then um, we will continue on with our EUR and CD. Okay, so let me just uh, verify that nothing's going to happen here, guys. Excuse me. All right. Um, well, uh, we should be having that uh, now, but I don't see anything. Um, okay. Uh, as expected, nothing uh, new there. Um, again, though, our um, focus is not on the decision itself, but on the press conference. We would like to hear that um, there are some speculations that the end has been seen for rate cuts in the Eurozone. We would like to hear that. If um, someone can get Mario Draghi to confirm it later, that would be a good excuse for a Euro rally. All right, let me uh, take a look at our um, EUR and NZD again, guys. So we were talking about trying to squeeze this. One of the easiest way of, uh, one of the easiest trade that we can get in, in, in uh, Forex is if you have a mismatch in the currencies. In fact, that's what your objective should be when you're a trader. You look for a currency where the policy says that currency should be strong and the other currency says that currency should be weak. I think EURNZD is one of those currency pairs. Well, Ahmad, that's why you have to look for these kinds of currency pairs. The bigger the imbalance between currency pairs, the more trending and the more pips you're likely to make until some stability, some balance uh, happens again, which is why I'm pointing out EURNZD. If you compress your charts, oops, ah, looks like I got a bad tick. 
Okay, if um, you look at your charts, you'll see that there's a lot of room to move up in your EUR and ZD. You look at your um, Kiwi from multiple, well, you look at uh, your other Kiwi charts, you will note that you're at the highs for them. In NZD, USD, you're hitting a nice resistance level. The point here is, it doesn't look like Kiwi can hold on to these uh, levels that uh, it finds itself in right now. Um, again, data has been poor. Um, it's not as if we have a rally in agricultural commodities. The world's flooded with food right now. And there are no reported droughts. Yeah, at this point, um, the range is already near its peak for today that I won't be an excited buyer now. Um, I would prefer having a pullback, maybe getting to a pivot point before actually doing something about it. Your actual range is, um, average range is 158. So in theory, you may be able to get another 20 pips. But why chase 20 or 30 pips when you know that uh, you're needing the resistances already. So the best thing that you can do is to look for better pricing, look for a pullback. Let me go to the hourlies. Let's see if we can find a good price. Looks like we had a flag pattern earlier. Can I get uh, to our breakout point for the flag pattern? And use that as our entry later on. So, um, as far as uh, this is concerned, um, not in a position to take any immediate action, but in the long run, this could be one of the things that uh, you might want to focus on getting your, uh, or joining that EUR and ZD rally. If you look at the indicators for now, we actually have a confluence of buys in the hourly picture. From the 4-hour chart, um, well, you've got a mixed view there. From the dailies, we've been uh, seeing higher lows and higher highs. So we should be looking for that next higher high in the medium run. But for the intraday trade, look for a pullback first. Look for your uh, flag pattern uh, resistance, your 6170 breakout point. Projected high for EUR and ZD is 62.73. So you could be talking about potentially 100 pip upside. All right, guys, um, let's move on. Well, Ahmad, you know, you're um, free to your opinion. Hey, Wayne, yeah, let's uh, take a look at it. Not really. Oof, what do we have for um, our uh, Euro chart? I'm looking at this and um, to me, I would really look for a rally towards uh, at least 61.83 replacement of your sell-off for uh, the last two years. That's about um, 38, 33. Um, we have a weekly low there. We have some highs there from before. And that's a fifth level as well. So I look at it as a strong resistance area. So that's my objective in the in the medium term. Maybe going to uh, well, maybe sometime next week. Although next week um, you have that holiday in uh, China, one week, so there could be an impact of that as far as uh, risk taking appetite is concerned. If we look at our euro now, where do we find ourselves? We've had a 73 pip bounce. We bounced off our um, strong support, previously a strong resistance at the 
3500 level psychological price point and also a rejection point from before so I look at this as um, a good support level um, we haven't quite gotten to the 21 day EMA so I'm thinking maybe we're not yet in a position to get that next big surge in your euro I'd really want to take the buy side of your euro when I find it um, around the 21 day EMA average range is 112 we've got room to maneuver possibly another um, 40 of course if during the press conference we hear again if someone can convince Draghi to categorically state no more rate cut then that's going to be a big boost for um, euro sentiment we should expect to go beyond average daily ranges if that if those words were to come out of uh, Mario Draghi's uh, mouth later for our picture um, what do we have well we've lost momentum for now um, we've got a moderate resistance to deal with at uh, 35.96 we've got projected high at 36.15 but again guys for me what's important is the press conference technically I would be more confident about looking for more gains once we're above these uh, previous highs that to me would be a suggestion of continuing on with the higher lows higher highs that we have no okay we don't have any clear bullish uh, pattern from the candlesticks themselves if our least what do we see looks like a flag pattern But again, we really, I think we really have to wait for um, the, press, the press conference to get our uh, breakout. So if we're still around this price levels uh, when that press conference gets started, and um, again, if we can somehow get a confirmation that rate cuts are already over in the eurozone then we have a nice excuse to rally up so Wayne I'm bullish about this but I don't think that uh, it's a good idea to just buy this right now since we don't have any guarantees on um, what will be said during the press conference if you have a long uh, enough time horizon for your trade then I'll just say you know what as long as you can afford to place your stop loss under 35 why not so it depends really on your this taking appetite me I'd like to wait for now oh wow well um, good luck then you might uh, get yourself another uh, 40 or 50 or maybe even a hundred if uh, the right words come out of uh, Mario Draghi so a lot of people have actually been telling me isn't that uh, looking like a top already especially with that shooting star and then that sell-off Monday my answer to that uh, argument has always been look at where you are 61.8 fib and you still uh, you're still above the EMA lines well you know it's always a good idea to do a trail stop <laughs> if you're worried about it do partials um, something that I always emphasize take partial profits take partial profits you may not have um, a full hundred pip move if you do partials at least uh, you don't get to take
take a lot of dollars to home, but at least you have some money in the bank. And uh, if um, the position that uh, you still have in the market actually moves further in your favor, you still have your bragging rights about uh, getting 100 pips. Um, gem trader, the problem right now is you basically just have a Japanese government whose policy is really for weakening the currency. Um, we also heard from uh, we also heard from uh, Shirakawa last Tuesday. He said he will step down early um, this March instead of April, and um, the leading candidate is the next BOJ governor is uh, Koroda, and um, basically Koroda is uh, very dovish. In fact, um, if Abe wants a 2% inflation target, Koroda has uh, been said to have mentioned 3%. So, because of this situation, policy is uh, to weaken the currency, and then you have a uh, strength, you've got risk-taking appetite uh, with the stock markets rallying lately, uh, or at least rallying before, it was just difficult to get the yen pairs to pull back to the AMA lines. <laughs> but um, there are situations there that they do. Right now, though, policy and trend really just points uh, up. So it's rare for them to do it uh, for the moment. But it does happen. All right, guys. So again, um, the important thing is uh, the press conference, and that's going to be in 30 minutes' time. Um, in that press conference, you have to, well, we hope to hear from Mario Draghi hinting that uh, interest rate cuts are over. If we can get that, just the fact that there will be no more uh, rate cuts will be good enough for us to argue let's get a stronger euro going forward. Okay, um, any comments, questions, uh, complaints at this point, guys? Alrighty, um, I think I've run out of time. So, folks, thank you for uh, joining this class and good luck with the actual press conference. And again, listen to or look for hints of an end to the rate cut story. If we can confirm it, that's a good excuse for your euro to try to rally further. Thanks, guys, and um, till next time.